Hello, if you are interested in writing mathematical or scientific expression in an easy and accessible way in your Bricks editor, you are at the right place. Yesterday, I published an update for Structizy version 1.6 and the main new feature is the integration of the MathML mathematical markup language inside of Structizy allowing you to insert MathML elements or to parse MathML code into Bricks elements using the Structizy parser. I agree, writing mathematical expression is probably not the most trendy, fancy design for your next website. But if you are building a lot of websites, there is a high probability that someday you will have to build something, including mathematical or chemical or physical or any kind of scientific notations. So let's have a look at it and let's uh, see how easy it is to create mathematical formulas in Bricks with the help of Structizy. I did configure my panel to open by default on the new MathML tab in Structizy. And in this new tab, you will find all elements you will need to build mathematical expressions. If you are not seeing this part of uh, the panel in your Structizy panel, make sure you did update to the latest 1.6.2. One, I just released at the time of publishing this video. In this uh, small update, I did add many small primitives to make uh, your life easier when writing mathematical expressions. Uh, but first, let's add a section. And I will make my uh, section full height perfect. And uh, inside of my container. So just to show you, I will insert one of the examples. Uh, and for example, this one, this is uh, the demonstration of the Pythagorean uh, theorem. And we have a structure tree with specific elements. These are uh, mathematical markup language elements that create these formulas and this layout. So let's get rid of it and see how this works. So inside of my container, I have broken the elements into categories. We have the base tokens, the base elements, and we will have a look at it. We have elements used to generate layouts, elements used to create scripts and limits, elements for creating tabular layout. And then this is the latest additions. These are easy ways to add commonly used numbers, variables, fences and operators. And you have several examples if you want to see example of the structure to achieve various things. So everything starts with the math element, which is the basis of any mathematical expression. So let's create one and nothing is visible. But now we have the root container for our mathematical expression. And now let's have a look at the base token. So if I insert the first one, Structizy did create a MI element. It has a text content, and this is very simple. The MI element is used for function names, variable names, constant names. So it can be an F, it can be an X, it can be a Y, an A, anything. You will use an index each time to be simple when in your equation you need to write a letter. So let's keep an F for now. Then we can use the MN to insert a number. So this is the element you will use each time you need to render an actual number. And then we have the operator. And we need to think of an operator in a wide sense, because this will include operators like plus minus, of course, but this will also include parentheses, brackets, separators like commas, semicolons, etc. Okay, so that's very simple. If I want to write a basic uh, equation like x equals to 2y, I will add an index with a content of x. Then I will add an operator with a value of equal. Then I would add a number with a value of 2. And then again, an index with a value of y. And I have x equals 2y. But as you noticed, inserting the element and typing the value can take a bit of clicks and keystrokes. This is why 
I created all of those primitives. And if you extend it, you will see that we have even more. So we have predefined values accessible with a single click. Let's do the same. I select my math element and I want X equals to Y. And I have my equation with the correct tags. Okay, so these really are the basic building blocks for a mathematical expression. Then we have other tokens. We have the MS, the M space, and the M text. So let's start with the M space, for example, and let's imagine that for any reason, I want to insert a space between my equal and my two. Well, I will add an M space element. I will place it where I want to in my structure tree, and this creates a space between my elements. My M space element has specific attributes. Let's open it. And I did preset the element with the three main attributes, which are depth, height, and width. You probably understand that width controls the spacing between the elements and depth and height. It's a bit tricky because this is different from traditional CSS. It is the vertical spacing relative to the text baseline. So the height is the spacing over the baseline and the width and, and the depth, sorry, is the spacing below the baseline. Okay, I can move it at the end. And now I can add an M text. Of course, this is not the theorem of Thales, but the M text is a way to add a comment or an annotation, any kind of text that has no meaning for the expression itself. And the last one, the MS, so the difference is subtle. You see that it also adds a string of text. The difference between the M text and the MS for M string is that this is a comment or an annotation with no other meaning. The MS is a string of text that has a meaning for the expression itself and that should be interpreted by any software evaluating the expression. Okay, so don't get worried about it. If you don't know what it is, you probably don't need this specific one. Just know that it exists and it is available. So now let's start exploring more complex layouts. First, let's imagine that I want to write an integral. So let's select my math element and I will add simply the integral operator. And when writing an integral, often you want to write the limits from and to at the bottom and at the top. So you want to write something under and over the integral symbol. So let's add this element to my math element and let's slide the integral inside of it. Okay. So in my under over element, the first element is the main one. It's my symbol. And now I want to add something at the bottom, which is the starting point, the starting value of my integration. And I want to add the end point. So I want to integrate from A to B. So inside of my under over element, I simply need to add the start and the end. And MathML did the rest. I can integrate from A to B. And now I want to define my function. So still inside of my math element, at the same level as my under over, I want to add an F, a pair of parentheses, because this will be a function of X. And I integrate the variable X. So I will add the X. Okay, now this looks a bit strange because my parentheses are very big. And this is because I did place everything on the same level. 
So there is an important notion in MathML, which is the row. And uh, you will use the math row element to create a sequence of symbols. So let's close my under over and I will add a general layout element, which is the M row. I will bring it at the top, just below my under over, and I will slide all of these elements inside of it. So my function, my opening parenthesis, my X, my closing parenthesis, my D, and my X. And now I have something that looks like what I want it to look like. So this concept of row is important and will help us in many situations. For example, let's get rid of all of this. And this time I want to create a sum and I want to sum all numbers from one to the infinity. So to represent this, I will once again use an under over element. I will slide my sum inside of it. And now if I want to add n equals 1, it doesn't work as expected. You saw that it did jump in uh, many directions and this is because we need to create you guessed it a row so let's add inside of my under over a row and place the elements inside of it So it will be a sum from n equals 1, I'm defining the limits, to, and let's create a second row. And inside of my second row, I will add plus infinity. And you notice that this row elements, once again, helps us to create a row of symbols. And thanks to these elements, MathML will create the appropriate layout. So now what if it's not uh, n that I want to sum, but it's 1 over n. I need to create a fraction. So I will keep my sum. It doesn't change, but I will add a new layout element, which is the m frac for the fraction. I will slide my n inside of it. And I will add the 1, but of course I want the opposite, I want the 1 over n, so the 1 is first. Okay, so it's that easy to create a fraction. If I want to sum not n, but 2n, what should I do? Well, I should create a row, add my n inside of my row and add a 2. And then I have created a row below my fraction. And it could even be, why not, 2n plus b. Okay? And so maybe that's not 2n plus b that I want, but 2n plus b to the square or to the cube, or to any power. So we can, for example, add parentheses, opening and closing parentheses, and then I want a, super, a superscript for the power 2, for example. Uh, so I will use, once again, a layout element, which is the sup, m sup for superscript, and that's not a, a layout element, sorry, that's a script element. So let's add it. And I will slide my full row inside of it. And as for a lot of elements, the first one is the base, and then I will simply add a 2 for the power 2. 
And now let's imagine that I want the cubic root of it. Still inside of my fraction, let's add an m root element. Let's slide my superscript element inside of it. And let's add the value, which is, for example, a cubic root. And in terms of layout, you see that we can achieve something very complex, and that's quite simple. Actually, you create elements and you nest elements inside of each other, and you create rows, and each time you need to align symbols with one another. So I have achieved something quite complex below my fraction. I could do something similar on top. For now, I have only a number, a MN element with one, but I could create a row, slide my number inside of it, and start building something more complex. One plus A, for example, etc. And of course, something interesting, we can decide that we want to give it a color. We can decide that uh, the square will also have another color. And that's uh, very useful. For example, this morning, one of the long time StrictEasy users told me that this is a very powerful tool to help readers distinguish between what elements did change when reading very long expressions or equations. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of this. And let's write uh, something else. For example, I want to write the definition of a vector. So a vector is V. I want to symbolize a vector, so I need an arrow on top of my V. So I will use an M over element. I will place my V inside of it. So the first element, once again, is the base. And then I will add a second element and I will add a right arrow. And I did define my vector. And let's define it. It's equals to parentheses. And I will add the components. So once again, V. But this time I need a subscript because it will be V1, V2, V3. So we have an element for this. That's the M sub. Slide my V inside of it and add one. Then I will need an operator, which will be a comma. And I can duplicate. V2. V3. Also duplicate my comma. and finish with a closing parenthesis. Okay, so we have seen how to create subscript, how to create subscript. We can create both. For example, we want to write a chemical formula. So I will use FO, sulfur and oxygen. And I want both a subscript and a subscript. So I have the M sub sub element. Let's place it inside of it. So in my molecule, there are four oxygens. So let's add four. And uh, it's a negative ion. So it will be two. And 
it's in the opposite, but it will be 2 minus, and you will notice that once again, we need a row element to group the two symbols in my superscript. So let's add a row and slide my two elements inside of it. And now I have my formula SO4 to minus. Okay, and there are cases when you even need more subscript, superscript. Actually, you need post scripts and pre scripts. And we can do this also. So let's keep only the base. Could be the case for a tensor, for example. Uh, so let's take it and we will use the multi script element. Place my T element inside of it. And now you will see how it works. I can add multiple subscripts and multiple superscripts. And the algorithm will alternate subscripts and superscripts. So for example, let's a, add A, B, C, D. Okay? They are all children elements, but you can see that the algorithm did add A, add a subscript, B, superscript, C, D. When I'm finished with my post scripts and I want pre scripts, I will add to my multi scripts the M prescripts element and from now I will add pre subscripts and pre superscripts. So let's add for example X Y Z and you see that it doesn't work because I have one missing so I want to replace a missing subscript or superscript by and to do that, we use an empty M row. That's the proper way to do it. And maybe that's this one that's missing. And I have my correct result. Another thing very useful, of course, is uh, tabular data. For example, we can represent matrices with it. So let's uh, create a matrix that will be M. And M will be equal to, and we want to represent the matrix in a tabular way. That's the usual way. So I will use an M table element. And inside of my AM table, I will have an MTR table row. And inside of my MTR, I will have an M. TD, which is the cell inside of the matrix, and inside of my TD, I will have a number, a zero, for example. And I will have three zeros. And for example, the first one is not zero, it's one. Now I can duplicate my row. Okay, and I want to add what we call fences, brackets, to represent the matrix. So I will add a square bracket, an opening square bracket, and a closing square bracket. And this is how we achieve a tabular representation. So I hope you like it. I hope you will use it. I hope this will make your life easier next time you need to write mathematical expressions or equations. It's not easy to show that on a video, but from an accessibility point of view, using the proper MathML elements and not trying to write mathematic expressions as plain text make things much more accessible. If you give it a try with a screen reader, you will see that the equations are announced as a mathematical expression and they are read properly by the system.
Let me know in the comments what you did build with MathML and Structizy, and I'll see you in the next video.